The Golden Knights celebrated their Stanley Cup title at last night's Raiders-Packers Monday night football game by lighting the Al Davis torch. But the VGK photos, they were very revealing. Zach Whitecloud, Alec Martinez, we saw signs of what their injuries are. I'll tell you all about it right after this. Unlock- You're locked on Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome aboard. This is the opening day edition of Lockdown Golden Knights. Yeah, it is. Chris Collick (laughs) coming to you from Las Vegas. We appreciate you making us your first listen each and every day. And please subscribe to the YouTube channel Locked On Golden Knights. We are also on X slash Twitter at TD Chris G. The Tim at Tony Dasco is me and at Locked On VGK. Download the Game Time app. We're brought to you by Game Time today. Create an account, use the promo code LOCKDOWNNHL, you will get $20 off on your first purchase. So, Chris, uh, we saw the Golden Knights parading around last night over at Allegiant Stadium with the Stanley Cup. It was a cool moment. And uh, what caught our attention most was the fact that we saw Zach Whitecloud, his left hand, uh, both his wrist, his hand, and his uh it appeared as though he had his finger, right, all there in a cast. And then uh, Alec Martinez had a sling on, um, and we saw that with this appears to be apparently a left shoulder or left arm injury, probably blocked 100 more shots there, according to Jack Eichel. Um, and now they're both, uh, we could see why they're both on IR, but very telling, uh, just those photos alone. And I could see them there at the stadium from a distance. But, yeah, uh, those are legit injuries and something that we typically don't see because VGK would keep this hidden. In the past, they would have to, right? Yeah, I mean, a few things happening here. So Alec Martinez, the players came on the field for warm-ups is what it looked like uh, before the game started. Mm-hmm. And Alec Martinez, a video surfaced, looked like he was actually taking – the sling off if i saw it correctly i could be wrong no no he took it off there he did take but it off okay it on, took it off okay so at least that is a little bit telling that it's maybe nothing too big of a deal he's officially weak i think he's labeled as week to week on on um on cap friendly as well right now i'll check that in a second and week to week with this team we know what that means um zach white cloud we know a little less mystery there we know he had a surgery his arm is all wrapped up and stuff right now. So it's going to be a while here. Yes, there's mystery about these injuries and stuff. Last week, of course, Cassidy was downplaying these injuries to a pretty large degree. But don't hold that against the, the coach. Don't hold that against, you know, McCrimmon and everything. That's just kind of the verbal battles that these teams have through the media within one another. All the teams are going to downplay things and try and be as cautious as they can, as cryptic as they can. And that's just part of the game. You know, the NHL condones this by upper body, lower body, and that's it. So that's more of an NHL problem than a Golden Knights, Bruce Cassidy, Kelly McCrimmon issue. Okay, so the new pairings defensively we'll see tonight. Well, we've seen it before and in preseason and last season. You have Nick Hague and Petro. Petrangelo on that top uh, pairing there. And then Ben Hutton and Braden Pahal, uh, the back pairing, it appears to be. And that's what we saw in uh, the preseason late as well. Um, And so any issues there uh, with the back defenseman here uh, and the pairings and all that? Um, clarifying really quickly, Alec Martinez cap friendly day to day is what it says. So okay. we'll see what that actually turns out to be. Um, any concerns about the pairings? I'm kind of surprised that Cassidy, at least early on, is looking to roll with another vet beside 
Alec Petrangelo. Um, Alex Petrangelo, pardon me, and Alec Martinez, Alex. Never mind. Um, going with two vets on top there. It seemed like you could have gotten away with giving someone, you know, giving Braden Pahal the opportunity to be up on that line. You have Petrangelo playing next to you. You're in a good, comfortable spot right there. Um, or even Ben Hutton, if you're looking for the righty lefty, you know, combination and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, Hutton has proved the ability to play in any situation with any player. Penalty kill, power play, it doesn't matter. Hutton can do a good job. Hutton could probably be a forward on this team. Like that's how how fun he is and how much he commits to uh his craft of being a professional hockey player. So Hagen Petrangelo, I mean, it, it's a good top line, right? That's the shutdown line. The Kraken, uh, the Sharks, the Ducks, they better not score any goals on that line because that's how good that defensive pairing is. They're going to get scored on. That's just how it works. But it looks like Cassidy is really looking just to have that line. Things aren't going well. They're going to He's going to send Petrangelo and Hague over the board. So we'll see how long that goes. That's how they've been practicing. Um, Pahal gets a big opportunity right out of camp to show what he can do. And, you know, we'll see who can essentially hold on to um, White Cloud's position once Martinez hopefully comes back as early as next week. It'll probably be Hutton. Just again, you're looking at, you know, left-handed, right-hand replacements and stuff like that. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. And so uh, we also now yesterday was the final roster cutdown day. And where are <laughs> <laughs> Caden Korzak and Maxine Comtois? Where, where do they wind up? That's well, I mean, Korzak, like Korzak, HSK, somewhere. Korzak, HSK, and uh, just this morning, um, cap friendly. This is uh, this is yeah, where are they? Where are they in accordance now to the salary cap? They are perfect, Tony. They are perfect, right? It's going to be this another good, year of the Stanley cap. This another is how year. good Kelly McCrimmon is. Okay, here we go. Golden Knights roster is now set, perfect capture for vegas they are sitting at an absolute zero money available when you factor the ltir usage right now this is like the second time according to cap friendly this has ever happened so the golden knights kelly mccrimmon huge uh shout out for being able to utilize Finagle. all Finagle the, the tools Finagle. utilize Finagle every the single tool the, books, the nhl the makes available to all 32 rosters to get to salary cap compliance and tony is speaking for the other 31 national hockey league teams right now i'm speaking for the fact that kelly mccrimmon is a better gm than all of those 31 gms of other teams who instead of spending time you know learning how to get to a perfect salary placement. Instead, they just whine and complain to the league about how good. Okay, but where's Maxine? That's No, that's that's the mystery. Uh, the fact that he was in practice yesterday was mind-boggling. Um, it's like he's, you know, it's like he's waiting for the bus to pick him up, right? He's just sitting there and waiting and, and waiting and, and waiting and, and waiting and Hopefully the door is going to be open and there's going to be Kelly McCrimmon inside smiling. Okay, come on, come on aboard, son. We got a spot for you. You know, that's what it feels like is happening right now. And I wonder, I'll look this up uh, when you start talking in a second here. I wonder if there is a limit on how long a player can be on a PTO. Good question. Great question. Uh, yeah, a lot happening with VGK. Uh, today, things begin with that gold carpet presentation. Such a long day days mm -hmm. it's been now for VGK. Yes, coming out. yes. 3 30 they walk on the gold carpet you'll be there today is that I'll be there all okay. day long all right so 3 30 is uh the gold carpet i complained about it last year i thought it was just a little bit overdone now they have to worry about putting on their best suit their sunday suit if you will and then it takes forever and then, of course, the face-off won't happen until 7.30, 7.42, or whatever it might be tonight. So it's a very Over. long day. <laughs> Over. <laughs> okay. William Carlson. Why does he deserve to get the A? Uh, you know, so it's him and Eichel have the A's on their jerseys. Why? Well, so what they're, what, what they're doing is Eichel is going to get – him and Carlson are splitting it. 
Uh, Carlson gets it for the home games. Eichel gets it for the road games. No, and come on. That's, I guess my question. Right. No, I guess it my, be the other way around. Why? Because Eichel's the star of this this show. Sure, and, but and just because he's the star, does that home. mean he needs to? I well, mean, it's the, not WTF. I think, oh, WTP. Game, game time owes us a few extra bucks here. Um, so I guess my question is: checks it's in the mail. Day, game folks. time. It's checks in the day. mail. Game time. Um, no, I mean, I, I guess the question is, Tony, not even a question, but this Golden Knights locker room, the bench, the structure of the team behind closed doors. I don't know if these guys honestly care about the letter. And what I mean when I say, do I think they care? They take the prestige. They take the honor of having a letter on their jersey. It gives them, you know, the opportunity to talk to the refs during the game and, you know, the other players look to them for guidance and such. But with as strong as the Golden Knights locker room is, I, I don't think just because Eichel and Carlson are splitting a letter, who cares? They The players don't care. Eichel and Carlson don't care that much. They, they're happy. They're, you know, they, they understand the honor. But it's not like the coach's son putting a letter on his kid saying, okay, I'm the coach, my kid's the captain, let's go. Like, you know, that, that's not how this works. Um, well, how does this different, uh, differ than the owner putting the A on the players? Jersey? If it's the, you know what, A, if it's the owner doing it, he signs their paycheck, so he's got every right to do it. Um, I, I guess what I would be curious is if Should they did a up. sealed ballot in Should the Golden Knights up. locker room, who would the players end up choosing? And honestly, when it comes to this stuff, a lot of times it is worked out in the locker room among the players the, the the coach might assign the captain based on how training camp goes and you know a team like the philadelphia flyers this is a good example right you have so many kids on that team looking to make a name for themselves so many people looking to start a career that's a spot where someone like tortorella is going to sit the team down okay guys earn your letters show me you are deserving of a letter where in the golden knights locker room with all that veteran presence leadership a stanley cup victory now you don't necessarily need someone with a letter to guide this team. People are going to do it anyway. Marchessault is going to speak up if something isn't working. Petrangelo is going to speak up. Martinez is going to speak up. Ben Hutton will even say something to this team who is not nearly the season vet that the other players are. It just doesn't really matter. Now, if the argument is William Carlson deserving of wearing a letter, why not? I mean, he has been here since day one, day, day effing one, right? We've heard about this. Marchessault. March or so as well. Yeah, well, I mean, listen, if if you want to be the downer in this segment, I'll I'll I'll, I'll see your uh your captaincy of uh your, your assistant's captaincy of uh, William Carlson and raise you that Jonathan March or so is on a contract year and may not be here next year. Yeah, exactly. And Phil Kessel should have had an A too. He's not is he still Why hanging wasn't, around? You know, I, I wonder I wonder, and I don't know if he'll tell me when I see him next time. I'll probably see him tomorrow, but if he was at that dinner, just kind of hiding in the background, oh, I, I did see a terrible chirp. And I know I've been trying to be nice about this, but this is actually a, a funny chirp. Someone said uh, Robin Leonard was cited at the at the dinner, but then he had to go. Never mind. I'm not going to. I'm not going to finish okay. that one. I'm not going to finish. Come on, that. man. I'm, I'm not getting in trouble. You're going to leave us hanging. I'm going to leave you hanging there. I'm going I'm I'm to pull the brakes. Right. It wasn't nice. It wasn't nice. And I'm we're going to keep. We're going to keep all of you folks hanging as well. Coming up next, a look at tonight. It's that opening was good. night. That was, that was good. That was We've good. got the opponent. We actually speak about the opponents on this show. Uh, Seattle Kraken coming to town, and it's uh, Stanley Cup Championship banner raising night. Got that all out. We we'll return right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Game time app. You can. There we go. Okay. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. Game Time has deals on tickets right up until the start of the event. And even an hour after the event has started, you can check it out. They do have VGK tickets available, as always, on Game Time. With uh, zone deals, you get to pick your very section. And Game Time picks the seats. And that's an average of 18% savings right there. And the Game Time app, it also means uh, that you will always get the best price. So if you find tickets in the same section or the same row uh, for less, then Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time today. Download the Game Time app, create an account, 
and use the promo code LOCKDOWNNHL for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem with the code LOCKDOWNNHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We are back right here on Lockdown Golden Knights, the game day edition. Finally, Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick from Las Vegas. We appreciate you tuning in and listening wherever you get your podcast. And also, please make sure that you go to the YouTube channel, and that is Locked On Golden Knights. So we've got a uh, team coming into town. We sort of touched on this yesterday, uh, Seattle Kraken, a team now that wants to make its way in year number three, year number three, right, to the upper echelon (coughs) of the standings in the Pacific Division. Uh, Will the Seattle Kraken have the firepower? This is a team that last year upended Colorado, which was kind of banged up. Okay, the roster a little bit depleted. So they knocked the defending Stanley Cup champions last season um, out of the race there. And then they went seven games. They very easily could have uh, been BGK's opponent rather than the Dallas Star, uh, Stars. And so is this a team now that can move up to maybe the top two, possibly three, uh, they're in the Pacific Division. That's the big question. I think the division goes Edmonton, Seattle, Vegas, personally. That's just me. That's what my prediction is. Interesting. So, um, Why Seattle, though? I mean, what, what do you see out of Seattle and making defense that? Defense and goaltending. Okay. Defense and Edmonton. goaltending. Um, Edmonton, you know, they're going to do well in the regular season, but they're not going to do anything in the playoffs, in my opinion. Seattle, I just talked about. And Vegas, injuries. Yeah, we do have injuries here. And okay, what, so what, what about Maddie? Uh, well, Maddie Berniers. Uh, Matt, yeah. Do you think that uh, perhaps that uh, Berniers has himself the Calder Cup trophy winner from a season ago that he now continues to move up as well? Does everything sort of revolve around the top line center? 57 points, 80 games played, 24 goals for Maddie Berniers last season. Definitely going to take things to the next level. Seattle Kraken as a team going up. Uh, good season last year. No one expected him to do it. <clears throat> yeah, I know. You're struggling today. Uh, yeah, no. No one expected them to be that team that progressed that far last year. Uh, they were sort of like VGK early on. And now, as an expansion team, looking to take that next step. And another player. Okay, so we do have Matty Berniers. Uh, and then, of course, they need a healthy uh, Andre Burkowski because uh, he was injured most of the second half, if I recall correctly, of the season last year. And they missed him, especially like a player of his, his caliber in game seven. He was a player, too, that was so, so critical, uh, his presence on the power play unit. Yeah. And they, um... they had given him one, like a five year. Uh, contract, I think, when he came over from Colorado. So he has to more or less stay healthy. I think that's another big key for them this year. You also got a good signing in Brian Dumoulin. Brian mm-hmm. Dumoulin, um, very seasoned vet on the defensive side, going to obviously help to stabilize the defense a little bit. Um, back to uh, back to Maddie Beniers, obviously looking to take a major step forward from his Calder winning season. You got someone like Shane Wright who's going to start with Coachella uh, yeah. last year's number four overall. You love that guy. You love that guy. I mean, I like what he brings to the table. I like, I loved what he did in draft day and everything. Um, and then, of course, uh, Pierre Edward Belmar. We get to see him how about that. El Belmar's there. Uh, Kyler Yamamoto is there um, from Edmonton. Uh, yeah, they definitely did a little bit more to bolster their lineup there. So that's, that's a fact. And then, the biggest key, I think, for this team, sort of like VGK, will be goaltending. And Grubauer did not start off well a season ago. But then, man, he was on fire in the playoffs, and they need a healthy Philip Grubauer. And then uh, also, too, you have the fact that uh, Chris Drager now is gone. So he was cut in favor of Joey Decord. Joey Decord, I didn't realize this, but I know I called games when he played for ASU, which seems like eons ago, but Decord was in his fifth 
uh, NHL camp, uh, his fifth. And he really did show up for Coachella Valley last year in the finals. Martin Jones, unfortunately, I think uh, oh, was put on man. waivers. Man, that was that would have been a good one if we could have seen Martin Jones tonight. Would have been a, would have taken <laughs> the have over seven, all day the long. Over, the over slam dunk the over all day goal, long. Seven goal game for sure for VGK. Yeah, Seattle, they're just a fun team doing it. I won't say the right way because that's saying the Golden Knights did it the wrong way, but they're doing it their way. Season number one, no expectations like the Golden Knights, but they didn't do anything. Season two was the surprise season for the Seattle Kraken. No one had them having a 100-point season. I think that's the most remarkable thing before you even yeah. talk about the playoff run was right. 100 points in the regular season. And then obviously the playoff run, getting within one goal of going against the VGK for the Western Conference. So it just seems like they're growing in their way. You have a good core of players that's been together for a few years now, and they should be able to get into that 106, 108 point ballpark. I, I got Vegas at 104 officially, by the way, if we're going to, we're talking about that right now too. 104 points in the regular season, third place in the Pacific. Okay. And these two teams, they played tonight, but then I believe they won't play again until January 1st in the outdoor game. No, that's fine. By the way, when did they announce like uh, the jerseys for the outdoor game? I would bet as soon as possible because it's going to uh, be pretty soon, right? The sooner they announce it, the sooner people start buying them. I mean, it's going to be, I would say no later than November 1st, but I could be completely off on that and they might wait longer, but I would say November 1st so they can start selling them and do some type of promo night around them. Like they always do in these cities. And you know, it's all part of the revenue, all part of, all part of recuperating that cost of the rings, Tony. There you go. There we go. Tonight's game. Distractions abound. The Wags will have some plans already for the post game, and they're also going out today to buy the gold chains for the pendant. Okay, um, slow starts for VGK. That was a little slow in my start there. In Someone blasted you, Tony. They, they thought you were really tough on the rings yesterday. Were, were you? You were funny. I, I didn't really think you were like taking shots at the rings yesterday. I, I actually like the rings. I do. Okay. The best feature on those rings is when you take the decoder ring and you unscrew it and you see the ice and they have the two X's where William Carlson had his empty net goals. I thought that that was cool, the placement of where he got those ENGs. Slow starts for VGK in all seriousness. Jonathan Marcheseau was talking about this just the other day. This is something that they have to avoid. He said sooner or later it's going to catch up to this team especially after the first of the year and slow starts. I think that's a really big key for me coming into this season and coming into tonight's game, especially if they're out there seriously all day. I didn't like this last year. I doubly, I'm going to double down that. I really don't like it tonight for VGK. Yeah, this is, listen, this is the price of having a hockey team in Vegas. This is, and Vegas is the only team that does these types of arrivals. A lot of teams do, these took this you know opening night hoopla if you will obviously it's going to be on a different level tonight being stanley cup champions um we are we heard it already from cassidy slow starts getting over the boards for that first shift of the game and cassidy himself says it's on me cassidy to have the team ready to go they were not ready against colorado they were not ready against la positive side folks there is a positive side coming stop blasting me the positive side is the Golden Knights can close out games very, very well. Um, L.A. and Colorado, both teams who are going to be very competitive throughout the season, they had a good chunk of their NHL rosters out there, and the Golden Knights found a way to claw back from a three-goal deficit and a two-goal de deficit, respectfully, and found a way to win those games. Obviously, now it's a different uh, different type of pressure. Do we want to be playing you know, two and three goals behind in the regular season? Of course not. It's going to happen, but... Of course, no one wants to see that happen. Um, I think come Thursday, you'll see a different version of this team. But last year's game against the Blackhawks, that was the opening night game. The Golden Knights won 2-1 to one against mm -hmm. a team who went on to have the second worst record in the NHL. They got Connor Bedard, good for them. Um, but point being is Seattle should be a much tougher opponent than what Chicago was last year. It's going to be a tough game tonight. It's going to be a tough game tonight. Coming up next, does VGK have the depth that is necessary to repeat as Stanley Cup champions? We're going to talk about that when we return right here on Locked On Golden Knights. 
Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to do it than now. The app is so, so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and much, much more. So make sure that you visit FanDuel.com slash on and kick off the NFL season. It's FanDuel, the official partner of the National Football League. We are back. Locked on Golden Knights opening day here in Vegas. A lot of hoopla is planned. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. You can find us wherever you get your podcast. And please subscribe to the YouTube channel that is Locked on Golden Knights. What's up? Okay, so Jackie Aces, Jack Eichel, interviewed last night at halftime. Sporting, what a oh man, what a front runner. Sport, he's a he's a Patriots well, fan, and he's sporting a Raiders hat. I mean, Come what on. do you expect him to do? You you I expect know. him to wear a Patriots hat? Like well, this is a good <laughs> thing. They're they're supporting the team. That was I mean, cool. He, he probably just oh, got no, 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 the Raiders don't the Raiders don't care about this franchise. They don't even care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Golden Knight fans, the Raiders don't care at all about the Golden Knights. That's right. That's right. They don't care. I don't at think all. the I think the owners clash, but as far as an organization. I think, yeah, there's some meshing there. I thought it was and, cool. I thought it was know, great. It's great. Night. I mean, it's it's okay. Like, people just make such a big thing, Vegas versus the Raiders and all of that, or Raiders versus uh, Golden Knights. Like, that's not how it is. It's just not how it is. They didn't send a tweet. They didn't, they didn't send a tweet. Oh, my God. The whole team was on the field and up uh, up on the torch yesterday with the Stanley Cup. Life is good. That was Life awesome. is good. That was pretty cool. I Aces run nothing now, right? Aces, Sue, we're Aces on, on the road nothing. for another one. I mean, oh, yeah. Aces back-to-back, to back, Golden Knights back-to-back. To back. Yeah. town, baby. Title it town. Is, it is title town. I can't wait for the Aces to win the championship and then try to figure out where in the world they're going to have a parade. <laughs> where is the stinking parade going to be? It's like, it's ridiculous. It's absolute uh, turn two. Like, what in the world are they going to do? And Chris. we're not knocking. This is not a knock on the on the aces at all, guys. Not a knock on the aces at all. This is. But where are they going to put this? Where would they put it? Friggin' mess right now. Yeah, yeah. I had dinner at Bellagio last night, and I was hoping that the fountains at that Mayfair. Good time. Look, they had a good time, by the way. Yeah, I saw those pictures. Awesome. That looked that looked fun. Oh, I had a great time yesterday. I'm exhausted. Oh, I'm so tired. Whatever. Okay, we have depth on this show, right? We've got my man Chris. We've got. Oh, we'll have a surprise for you at the end of the show. Uh, I like that, Tony. That was good. That was good. But when we when we talk about depth, Chris, um, I'll answer your question because you posed it to me last night. Does this team have the depth to advance again and to win back-to-back Stanley Cups? Um, yes, there's definitely depth. I, I do believe that the AHL level is going to get better, not because of the development of players, but players have been in the system for a minute now. I like more emphasis on the AHL level. And I think they're going to play exactly under Ryan Craig, the same system that Cassidy implements because he was a part of the coaching staff with Bruce Cassidy. So I think that that is part of the depth question. My only concern, my only concern, the only area, again, just like last season, goaltending. Do they need that experienced goaltender how long is this going to last where the defense bails out and the defensive system structure bails out the goaltenders for VGK? Do they have enough there? Let's start there. To be fair, it's the system's not bailing out the goaltenders. It's just a strong, sound structure that is goaltender friendly and is definitely of benefit to Logan Thompson and Aiden Hill. And Logan Thompson, Aiden Hill, let's forget injuries for a second. That could be one of the top four or five tandems in the National Hockey League. When I say tandem, I don't mean you're calling Connor Hellebuck and uh, Laurent Brassois a tandem. That's not a tandem. Hellebuck's mm. going to play 65 games, maybe 75 games, now that he got that absolutely obscene contract, and Brassois is going to you know, get, get the scraps that are left. This is a tandem here in Vegas. It's going to be a 60-40 split, assuming both goalies are healthy the whole season. I hope Aiden that's going to be the case. The 60%, like I said. Aiden Hill. I'm, I'm, I'm the other 60-40. I still say Logan starts more games than Aiden this year. Um, concerning point, is the Golden Knights goaltending deep enough? 
No, <laughs> it's not. Um, Logan Thompson, if Logan Thompson can have a nice, healthy season, then sure, maybe it can be. Aiden Hill, guys, do your homework. He has never appeared in greater than 27 regular season games. Never appeared in greater than 27 regular season games. Is Yuri Patera, this is where we're talking about the depth, and his two NHL starts, is that enough when one of these goalies go down? And I hope it is. Everyone hopes it is. Everyone needs it to be. Because if it's not, that's where you're going to see some struggle. Let's give Kelly McCrimmon some credit here. He's going to find a way if there is struggles in that position with Yuri Patera. McCrimmon's going to find a way to replace that. So long story longer, Logan Thompson, Aiden Hill, if they're healthy, it's going to be a fantastic season. If one of them misses an extended period of time, it's going to be rough. And unfortunately, Logan Thompson has not appeared in more than 35 NHL regular season games. Aiden Hill. Oh, I did it. I know I did it. Aiden Hill is going to never bid more than 27 games. So it's a concern, folks. It's a concern. McCrimmon took a shot at paying Aiden Hill. And if Aiden's re- available for 40, 45 games, no problem. Good job. But that's a concern. It's a risk. He took a chance. I did not I did not see Larry Brossois at the ring ceremony. Do you think they sent that COD to him up in Canada? Perhaps. Probably. The COD, that's pretty funny. Okay. So the forwards, Durfiev. He made the roster, right? Uh, Cotter, yeah, even yeah. Br- Brisson. I think that those guys are going to be vital pieces this upcoming season. They really will be. The, that trio, yes. uh, we'll see Brisson come up at some juncture uh, during this season. And they're going to have to respond and they're going to have to fit in well. But those are three key pieces when you talk about depth that are going to have to perform. The most important players to this roster right now are not the veterans. It's going to be, like you just said, Cotter, Dorofiev, Rasan possibly. And then on the defensive side, you're looking at players like Ben Hudden, Pahal, and Korzak. And this is a good thing. A lot of those players I just mentioned, they have developed through the AHL system that apparently uh, the Golden Knights have no prospects in their system. There's a lot of those players who spent some time down in the AHL and done a good job developing. Well, you so, got 40, 40 year old veterans there. Yeah, exactly. You know? There you go. There you go. It's pretty yeah. awesome. Um, the biggest thing is going to be can the Golden Knights avoid long pockets where you have multiple players at one position out? Mm-hmm. We're starting the season just like that with White Cloud and Martinez. That's where you're going to see struggles. Um, I am concerned about the way Cassidy is doing the lines coming right out of camp. Cassie knows more than I do, so I'm sure they're going to be just fine. Um, but when or if, if, I guess I'll be positive, if Mark Stone goes down and misses 40, 45 games, and then Carlson, whatever his injury is, aggravates, March is so is in his 30s. Chandler Stevens pushing that number right now. Uh, we can go on and on here and just general injuries that are going to happen. Can those players, you know, develop and kind of be that saving grace? If Pavel Dorofiev doesn't have nine points down the stretch do the Golden Knights win the division is Brendan Brisson this year's version of Pavel Dorofiev who's going to really save this team's uh, bacon so to speak when we get down to uh, March okay last year we started this feature you started a feature called locks of the night and the star of locks of the night by far by far is little Chris and I have not seen little Chris all summer he's probably big Chris by now I hear him. He's coming. He's coming on the show. They're coming in hot. They're coming in hot. Oh my! Oh, we got both oh, of them. Wow. We got, we got both, both of them. Of them. This, is the, this is the appearance of Chris and Allie. Guys, Whoa, look at the camera so you can see really where you are. Make sure sharp. you can see you. They're Allie, come over great. the shoulder. Get close to my shoulder. Right oh here. my goodness! Look at those kids. Side, they've, side. they've grown up. There are they in college yet? What's going on? Over you guys there? in okay. college yet? Tony wants to know. Yeah. All right, no. so locks of the okay. night, guys. We, Go ahead. I think we're going to try and keep our standings this year. I'm really going to try and keep keep track of what's we going on. We started off pretty hot, pretty good, and then we faltered. All right, right Tony, you go ahead. So pretty locks good. of the night, we're going to call the, the winner of the score and one player that's going to do well tonight. I'm going to go with my fave. My fave. I'm going to go with uh, with Barbashev. I'm going to go with Barbashev. He's my favorite player now. Sorry, Jack. Uh, you wore, you know, you need to wear, you need to be loyal to your team. And I'm going to go with Brett Howden, and I'm going to go with a three to two final on um, banner raising night in favor of Seattle. 
I was writing Seattle before you even finished. Before you even finished. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have some fun. We're gonna have some fun on the first night. We're going Colasar and Hutton. We're coming out swinging tonight. Ooh. We're going Colasar wow. and Hutton to have a nice effect on the game. And I am going four to two Seattle. Seattle for okay, Chris. So you're gonna pick two players who think you're gonna do something, and then you're gonna say the score of the game. Stone, I stone Eiffel and three four Kraken done. <laughs> okay, hold on, Ellie. So we got what four, three, Seattle, and he has to do a mic drop on day one. Four feet crack and stone and Eichel for a little Chris. A stone and Eichel, stone and Eichel. Okay. All right, Allie, I'm sure you're going to pick March. Allie, one of your players, right? Allie's debut. Marshall Stone, and I think the score will be three, three, two, Knights. Okay, March is so in stone. Allie says three, two, Golden Knights. So, Allie, no matter what happens, you just became the star of today's show. Yeah. And what's her major in college? Allie, what's your major in college? Soccer. Soccer. Soccer, soccer player, <laughs> Allie. Soccer player, Allie. She's a soccer player. Well, we are looking forward to tonight's game. And make sure that you follow Chris there at TD Chris G. He'll be up in the press box. He'll be on the gold carpet. Um, he'll be wearing his Raiders hat. All that tonight. You'll see him there at T-Mobile I Arena. I have a Raiders shirt. I don't have a hat. Uh, you'll be wearing, yeah. Are you going to be able to hold the cup again tonight or walk down the gold You're carpet? You're saying like I've held the cup once before. Well, the, you know what? The Manning said that they drank out of that sleazy cup. So I never would. I would call this. You just call the Stanley Cup sleazy. There you go. Johnny. <laughs> yeah, good job, buddy. It's good just, job. It's dirty, bro. If anyone made it to the 36 minute mark of this show, you're going to get slammed for that one. <laughs> we appreciate everyone tuning in, especially our everydayers, especially little Chris and Allie. We appreciate them as well. And we'll be back again tomorrow. We'll recap this game. My goodness, off the rails early in this week. And at our everyday we started off the rails them. today. <laughs> We're still you in make, preseason form, folks. Bear I, with us. <laughs> you make things happen out there. We'll see you again tomorrow right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Let's get out of here.